This is an introduction to the triple post lid speculum. Conventional lid speculum supports the lids at two points. This opens the eye in a rectangle as seen on the left. However, since the area we want to see is round, it seems paradoxical to expose it with a rectangular opening. The lids have a circumference that limits how much they can be open. By creating a rectangle, the two-point speculum uses much of the circumference at the four corners. This only exposes conjunctiva and does not improve visibility for the surgeon. In fact, when used in smaller eyes, a two-post speculum may cut off the superior cornea and limit exposure. Furthermore, the Bell's phenomena may cause the eye to rotate upward and limit visibility of the superior field. The triple post lid speculum as seen on the right was developed to overcome these problems by opening the eye in an oval configuration. All surgeons have cases where exposure is difficult because the center of the lid is not adequately elevated. The goal of the triple post speculum is to eliminate problems with exposure. By opening the lids in an oval shape, the speculum takes advantage of the natural geometry of the lid. The addition of the central post alleviates the middle portion of the lid and maximizes the available circumference in a shape that optimizes exposure. This is the left eye. It is clear that the superior limbus is very well exposed. This is an early prototype of the speculum where the superior blade had three posts and the inferior blade only had two. It demonstrates another important advantage of the triple post design. By the end of this case, the lower lid has rotated out from under the drape and now the lashes are exposed to the surgical field. The presence of lashes in the field increases the risk of infection. However, the triple post design prevents this rotation as seen in the upper lid. The central post supports the lid and helps maintain contact with the drape. This reduces the risk of lid rotation and exposure of lashes. The speculum is placed by rotating the superior blade under the upper lid and then rotating the inferior blade beneath the lower lid. The mechanism is then turned to open the speculum to a desired amount. Again, the superior blade is placed beneath the upper lid, and then the inferior blade is placed beneath the lower lid. Then the mechanism is turned to reach the optimal opening. The speculum is placed in a smaller eye. You can see that despite a small interpalpable fissure, the oval configuration gives the surgeon excellent exposure.